So it's 2025 and you're looking at buying a new Mac. Before you do though, I often see people making these common mistakes that just completely ruins their overall Mac experience or you know, ends up costing them a lot of money that they could have saved. Now I've been testing and comparing Macs and reading tens of thousands of comments from people about their Macs over the last five years on this channel, as well as spending four years doing tech support for Apple back in my university days where I talk to customers every single day. And here are some of the biggest mistakes I see that you should avoid. Just quickly before that though, thanks to Quillbot for sponsoring this section of the video. Now, you probably hate work emails, just like me, uh, but luckily Quillbot makes them easy. Quillbot is a handy Chrome extension that seamlessly integrates into my Mac. It checks my grammar, helps me sound professional, and just generally makes work so much less stressful. Their website is pretty cool too. So install Quillbot for free with the link below and instantly make your email inbox much easier to manage. So I'm gonna start with one of the biggest mistakes I see people making when buying a new Mac, and that is future-proofing. Now, whether or not to future-proof a Mac is something I see all the time in my comments section. People asking if they should upgrade the RAM or the SSD or get more CPU or GPU cores, etc., uh, because they plan on keeping the Mac for a long time and want to future-proof it. Uh, or, you know, just in case they need that upgrade, you know, three years later. Now, from what I have personally seen after running this channel and you know speaking to all those customers while I worked for Apple, is that in many situations, future-proofing is just a complete waste of money, uh, even more so now in 2025. So let me give you a few common scenarios that I personally have come across. Now, the most frequent one is future-proofing because you wanna keep the Mac for a long time, right? And I get it, it makes sense. The more powerful a system is, the longer it will be before its performance starts to become an issue if you know apps and programs get more powerful and demanding. I have a friend that whenever he buys a new laptop, he gets the most powerful and future-proofed one he possibly can to prevent against this. Now, if we were talking about gaming PCs, absolutely, you know, try to max your budget, uh, get the most powerful GPU you can afford, etc. cetera, uh, because the purpose of a gaming PC is running extremely demanding games, right? Now, my friend, he's what I'd call an average user. Now, the average user is not slamming their system all day, every day. They're reading emails, uh, writing Word documents, watching YouTube videos, and you know maybe do a few somewhat demanding tasks every now and then, like editing photos or a video, etc. But overall, this workflow is not demanding, and it will not be significantly more demanding in you know five years time. Now I have a 10 year old Intel MacBook and it does all of my day-to-day -day tasks perfectly fine without issues. Whenever people ask me what they should do when it comes to future proofing or upgrading the CPU or the RAM, etc., I ask them just one question. For that particular upgrade, will you be able to take full advantage of it right now and also in the future. If there's a maybe or not sure in that answer, uh, just don't get it. It is a waste of your money. Now, don't get me wrong, Apple will love you because instead of buying their base model product that gives them the least profit margin, uh, you're now instantly paying you know, 20, 30, 40% more and all Apple has to do is slap another $20 RAM module onto the motherboard, for example. Now for professionals who are doing demanding tasks, it's pretty similar. Uh, buy what you will be able to take advantage of right now. In you know three years, for example, if your needs change or you start using a more demanding program, for example, worst case scenario, sell your current Mac on a secondhand market. Uh, Macs have amazing resale value. You get like 60% of the original amount back uh, and then buy a new one with the latest tech. So you'll get an instant uh, huge boost in performance. In some cases, you know, two or three times faster versus whatever random upgrade you spent money on three years ago that may have only given you like a five or 10% boost. Now, all of this being said, prior to 2025, there was a very solid argument for upgrading or future-proofing the RAM of base model Macs from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. But as of 2025, all base model Macs now start with 16 gigabytes. So that is no longer an issue. Uh, unless of course you have specific needs for more RAM, like running virtual machines, for example, 16 gigabytes is 
more than enough for almost everyone and will be for years. Now, in second place to the whole should you upgrade RAM argument was should you upgrade the SSD? For desktop Macs like the Mac Mini or the Mac Studio, this is less of an issue because you can easily add additional storage via an external drive that is attached 24 seven. For MacBooks, it's a little harder. Yes, you can still use external drives, of course, uh, but they can be a real pain in the ass to constantly plug in, uh, unplug, Maybe it accidentally disconnects when moving your MacBook around. If you lose it or misplace it, you know, your cat chews on the cable, etc. And if you take the M4 MacBook Air as an example, only about 215 gigabytes out of the 256 gigabytes advertised are usable after you take into consideration the macOS operating system and of course other system files. And honestly, 215 gigabytes is enough in many situations. Uh, for me personally, I can install all my apps, uh, my iCloud files, which is about 50 gigabytes worth of data and have some space, about 80 gigabytes left. But 80 gigabytes is really, at the end of the day, not that much and it can fill up slowly over time. Uh, you also cannot upgrade the internal SSD either as it's soldered on. So my advice is if you have files that you frequently need access to, like you know every day for the next five years, for example, and the 256 gigabyte SSD is not large enough, and maybe you also just hate carrying around an external SSD, uh, just do yourself a favor and consider you know, clenching those butt cheeks and paying for additional storage. I think the 512 gigabyte or the one terabyte SSD are good options, uh, depending on how many frequently accessed files you have, of course. So moving on to another mistake I see people making. Now, if you already have a Mac and are considering buying a new one because this one's getting a bit slow, don't give up on your old one just yet. All computers get slower over time is one of the biggest pieces of misinformation I hear on the internet. Your computer does not get slower, right? It has the same performance as it did the day it rolled off the manufacturing line. What does happen though is a mixture of applications and programs becoming more demanding, which you can't control and your operating system, so macOS in this case, slowly becoming a bit more bloated and corrupted over the years, which you can actually control. Now, when I did tech support for Apple, this was one of the most common calls I got. Uh, oh, you know, my Mac is really slow. It takes ages to boot up and load apps. And I always get the spinning beach ball of death. I would get that every couple of hours, every single day for like four years. In fact, I got this call so many times. One day I just went home, recorded a tutorial video and uploaded it to YouTube. In fact, it was one of my first ever videos on this channel. So how does this whole operating system getting slower thing happen? Well, let's say I have a five-year-old Mac, right? Well, that's five years of regular software updates. So, you know, the code of the operating system itself being updated and changed. Uh, sometimes there are tiny errors. It's also five years of installing and deleting apps of downloading and transferring thousands of gigabytes of files and you know the temporary caches being filled and emptied. Over time, this can cause the operating system to essentially degrade somewhat, uh, for want of a better word. Now the fix is really simple. Make sure you have a backup, of course, uh, either Time Machine or just copying your data to the cloud or an external drive, doesn't really matter. Uh, shut down the Mac, boot it into recovery mode, then erase the internal drive. Once complete, you can now reinstall macOS, which is essentially a clean, fresh copy of macOS downloaded from Apple's servers. Now, when you set the Mac back up again, don't use Time Machine to restore all of your data. I have had situations where this can bring some of the issues back onto the Mac. Uh, instead, just spend like, you know, two or three hours one afternoon manually reinstalling apps uh, and things like your fonts, your data, and all of your logins, et cetera. Now, personally, I do this entire erase and reinstall process every two to three years on my personal Mac, uh, and I never have issues with Mac OS that can't be fixed with a simple shutdown and restart, and even those are really rare. So if you are experiencing slow issues with your current Mac, uh, just try that, and you might be able to squeeze a little bit longer out of it and save some money. Now, when you're buying a new Mac, try not to buy it directly from Apple. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying directly from Apple. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it's the only option. Or maybe you're a student 
who's eligible for the 10% student discount. But just make sure you consider all of your options first. Apple never does sales on their website, but they do sell their products on resellers like Amazon or Best Buy that do. Now, sale periods like Easter, end of financial year, you know, back to school, Black Friday, uh, they occur around every three months. It's kind of like a reoccurring cycle. Uh, and these periods are the best time to pick a new MacBook up. Now, if you're looking to buy a new Mac right now, like, you know, September, October, November, 2025, uh, I would personally wait until around November if you can. Uh, there will likely be new Macs being released in October or early November. Not sure exactly when it will happen. Uh, and that should also coincide with some Black Friday or Cyber Monday deals. Now, typically these sales are mostly for base model Macs. For example, a while ago, I saw the 13 inch M4 MacBook Air for just 849 US dollars, which is a discount of 15%. However, occasionally these resellers will offer upgraded models too. Now, if you notice in the configuration section of that Amazon product page, I can get the 512 gigabyte upgrade with a 13% discount or the 512 gigabyte and 24 gigabyte RAM upgrade for a 11% discount. And that's really the only negative when buying from resellers and not Apple directly. You often can't select specific configurations like you can when buying brand new from Apple. Alternatively, there are refurbished Macs and there's a lot of wrong information floating around about refurbished Macs. Here's how a Mac typically becomes refurbished. Scenario one, someone buys a Mac, you know, uses it for like one day, decides they don't like it or they want a different model or whatever, and they return it to Apple. So it's effectively still a brand new Mac. Scenario two, maybe a MacBook ships with a battery that is either DOA, dead on arrival, or stops working soon after. That MacBook is also returned to Apple. Uh, the battery is replaced. And before any of these Macs are put on the refurbished product page, no matter if it's brand new and has been used like once or it's you know had a battery replacement, they are thoroughly tested and cleaned. And they also come with all the same warranty as a new one, uh, brand new packaging, and you can buy Apple Care for them. There are also a lot of different configurations on the refurbished store. Uh, and on average, you'll save five to 10% versus buying brand new for effectively, as I said before, no real downsides. Now, the last mistake is a bit of an obvious one, and that is not correctly identifying what you're going to be doing all day, every day on the Mac. So before buying one, sit down for five minutes, put together a list of things you do frequently. Uh, here are some examples I put together that you can use for inspiration. And you'll notice how they are grouped according to how demanding they are. Now, once you do this, you can watch specific videos that go into detail on how the Mac performs in those specific tasks. Or, you know, what Mac is the best for photography or coding or productivity or whatever. But be specific, that is the important part. You know, don't just go out and buy a Mac that you think would be a good fit, or maybe just buy another MacBook Air because your current Mac is a MacBook Air, for example. And if you take my channel, for example, I have all different types of videos testing Macs, or comparing them against each other. I go through a lot of different everyday workflows. And if you watch a few of these videos from different channels, uh, you will quickly get an idea of which Mac and potentially which configuration will suit you best. Now, YouTube will usually recommend a video here that you might find interesting on your search journey.